Hello everyone. So we worked on a LOD system for our runtime terrain generation in the last time. So we implemented a method or an additional parameter to define the load factor or the level of detail when we generate the mesh details for each tile. And as you can see here, these close range tiles have a higher poly count compared to the tiles in the far range. If I move further up, you can clearly see that. Here you see in this edge, these areas have a higher poly count and these areas have a lower poly count. And that's what we are we worked on yesterday. Now today I want to work on as the player moves closer, those low detailed areas should be transitioned into a high detailed terrain tile so you can actually see that here if i speed up now you see additional trees added and the additional details added to the terrain tile in this view you can see that and if i enable the wireframe mode you can see that too see so that transition that's what we are going to work on today before we get started I'd like to remind you that you can download the project files of this project and all other thousands of projects that I have done in my channel. To the date, there are over 1700 video. For each video, project file is available in my Patreon page. I'll leave the link in description below. Support in my work through Patreon will help me to continue creating the content just like these tutorials in future. All right, now let's get back to today's tutorial. So here is the C++ project. Let me run it and open the Unreal project. So this was the state of the last episode here. If I move up and enable wireframe mode, now you see, just like in the demonstration I did in the introduction, you can see low detail tiles in the distance but here as I move further or closer to those tiles this load transition is not happening yet because we did not work on that part as of the end of the last episode so that's what we need to work on now right so the first thing that I should edit here is let me open the world engine and here you can see I call this generate terrain async that I get from this queued tiles but we add two queued tiles here so here if I already have these certain coordinates in this queued tiles data structure oh yeah, this is a map I don't add it so that's what happens here but this is only valid when we have a single level of detail but now that we have multiple level of details levels uh, we cannot rely on this logic so even if we have this queued tile inside this data structure now we need to check the LOD level as well that we have already queued so if the given LOD level is different from what we have we need to update that from this queued tiles so here if this condition is true we can check this y represents the LOD level that we have given if this is equal to the LOD level that we have here that we calculate here then we don't have to update so let's add, add another branch if this is true that means we don't have to really update so we can just go to the output if this is false that means we have added to the queue that we need to generate this tile in a different LOD level. But now that in the most recent events, 
the LOD level is different. The required LOD level based on the current location of the player is different. So that means we need to update this enqueued LOD level. That means we need to call this even if we have this element here. And also here we have one more possibility that in this queue tiles we have this element and also that uh, this tile is already calculated with a different level of detail so in that case we need to tell the system to remove that existing tile but as of now we don't have a way to define the tiles that needs to be removed therefore let's go back to the c++ project and just like this queue tiles i'll add another variable let's call it what should i call it so the reason i used it this name is because we are going to use this to remove um, load levels of the tile that we are going to re-render with a different LOD level compared to the one we that already have okay now save it and go back here compile and we have added the same property specifiers blueprint read write therefore we can access this variable from the blueprint side as well okay compilation complete now here remove lod queue get remove lod queue and we need to check if this is not equal to minus one if this is equal to minus one that means this tile is not generated yet so that means we don't have to remove that load level from the tile so if this is not equal to minus one means we have already generated that tile. therefore if this is false we can just go here and update if this is true that means we have to remove it so to the remove load tile i'll add this tile coordinate that means this x and y and x means the mesh section index that we need to remove we would get that from here and y means the LOD level we have it here okay and after doing that also we should return to this part right now i think if i try now i would see why is it all black oh by mistake i have a breakpoint here mm -hmm here so now i should see oh no something is wrong see the tiles are added again and again in the same location so that's why we it keep piling up trees what's the issue let's see well actually this condition if that condition is true that means we don't have to check anything else or do any of this we can simply go to the output that was the issue and only in this false case we should go here yeah let's check now yeah now it's working let's see the change in LODs so the tile over here is in low detail now let's go closer yeah you can see tiles are changing but I think the older tile is still there. See, do you notice this? Uh, to check the values in remote queue, we 
can use this method but in order to do that we need t arrays of f in points for value array and key array we could reuse this if these two variables were defined outside like this yeah now i can use it so here i write a comment removing uh, outdated LODs and ERA. I'll empty it in case we have anything here from the previous steps. Value array empty. Okay, now remove LOD here. array key array and pass ERA. And similarly, remove LOD here generate value array and pass value array now if remove l body view contains the index of the currently drawn type is contains within this remove load queue that means an outdated lod is there in the level so if the currently drawn tile index is this section index x and section index y this is the currently drawn tile index now if that is there that means we have a, an outdated LOD level and we need to remove that so in order to remove it we need to find out the mesh section index of that type for that we need to access the value and so we need to remove both foliage tile and the mesh section but we should remove the foliage tile first before we attempt to remove the mesh section because foliage tile uses mesh section details to determine which uh, foliage instances are placed on that mesh section so therefore here remove foliage tile and give well dot x that is the mesh section and also from the terrain mesh after removing the foliage tile remove no not remove terrain mesh your mesh section and we need to give the section index that means value x okay and also we need to remove this element now from this remove load queue so remove the load queue and give the key again this is the key okay all right i think that's all i have to do let's go back here compile and let's test so here now we see the lods are updating but we can't see the mesh data so in the wireframe level pay attention to here as we go closer yeah it did update now let's see if we have any overlappings in these edges or in these lines we don't so that means the old, old LOD has been in fact removed so the system is working as intended I have enabled the unit graph and the PS counter to see the impact on the performance let me speed up now you see there are some spikes happening but it doesn't really matter because I was actually speeding up so in the real time when i play it doesn't make a considerable impact now you can see new tiles are added and lower level tiles are also updates but still we have a pretty stable frame rate so everything is working great even if i speed up we get a very high frame rate so yeah 
all good and i'm gonna stop this episode here uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and also please let me know what else you guys would like to see in this series in future episodes so thanks for watching updated project files will be available in the patreon page link would be in the description below and see you in the next episode goodbye